Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we will talk about triangular uh, prisms today. Uh, this is part of uh, advanced mathematics course offered on unizor.com and that's where I suggest you to watch this lecture from, from this website, because there are notes. Notes are very important. It's like a textbook for you. All right, now, we have learned a lot about prisms um, when we talked about um, parallelepipeds. So if you remember, parallelepiped is a prism with parallelogram as a base, which means the second base is also the same parallelogram and every side face is also a parallelogram and then we were calculating the volume of this um, object. Well, I would like to continue talking about other prisms, in particular today's triangular prism, and about its volume. Um, I will also use concepts of symmetry, which we have introduced in previous lectures. Um, symmetry is very important for this particular case, because that's how I decide to work with volume of the uh, triangular prism. All right. So, what is triangular prism? Well, triangular prism is obviously the prism with um, triangle ABC as a directrice. Um, obviously, we can talk about the right prism if um, the side edges are perpendicular to the base. Um, but this is not um, important for this particular lecture. Actually, I think in the future, if you will deal with prisms, primarily it will be the right prisms when these edges on the sides are perpendicular to base, whether it's um, the prism with uh, a square or a parallelogram as a base or, or a triangle or pentagon or hexagon or whatever else. So prisms usually in all the real uh, uh, problems are right prism. But again, it's not a matter right now. <coughs> We have introduced uh, a concept of volume um, first for um, uh, right rectangular prisms, if you remember, and um, and then we um, calculated this as uh, a product of the area of the base times altitude. That was um, how we did it for. Um, rectangular, right rectangular prisms. Then we expand it to any parallel, uh, parallel pivot. And basically the formula is still the same for any prisms, but that's what I'm going to do right now. I will talk about triangular prism and I will try to prove that this formula still holds for a triangular prism. It's actually a simple thing to do if I will use the concept of a symmetry, which I mentioned already. And here is how I would like to do it. Um, from, from the plane geometry, you understand that a triangle can be, um, using a, a central symmetry, can be expanded into parallelogram. So if I know that the area of the parallelogram is uh, length of the base times altitude, using this transformation which is actually a central symmetry relatively to, for instance, in this case, relatively to this point. So this is the middle of this um, edge. So this point symmetrically transformed into this, and this is transferred into that, because this is a central symmetry, which means we have to draw a line through the center of symmetry, which is on that line in the middle, which means this point goes to this and this to that. And this is uh, obviously, uh, the line through the point, let's call it A to A prime. Now, and this um, uh, segment AP is equal to A prime P, and it's very easy to prove that this is a parallelogram. And also, since symmetry transforms a, a, an object, in this case a triangle, into um, uh, congruent triangle, uh, their areas are the same, which means that the area of a triangle is just half of the parallelogram. So this is the idea 
for the plane geometry and I will use exactly the same idea for this case. I would like to construct another prism next to this one which touches this one using this same um, concept of central symmetry. So I will choose the line I will choose uh, this as a center of symmetry. So BC uh, C prime B prime is a parallelogram because you know every prism has a parallelogram as a side. So this is the center of diagonals. And let's see what happens if I will transform the whole uh, triangular prism symmetrically uh, using this as a center. But obviously B prime goes to C. C goes to B prime, B goes to C prime, C prime goes to B. So these four points will be exactly where they are in the symmetrical um, object. Now points A and A prime will be different. Basically what happens is this. Not exactly a straight thing. That's how it will be. So that's my new prism. Now this would be, let's say, D and this would be D prime. So A will go to D and uh, A prime will go to D and A will go to D prime. Now, it's um, B, G, C, or B, C, G, B prime, C prime, D prime is a prism. For obvious reason, because if you remember that any line centrally symmetrical is reflected into line, so A, A1 will be reflected uh, to D, 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 D prime, parallel to the original line, right? So these are parallel. And considering if you will connect A prime with D and A with D prime, you will have basically a parallelogram A, A prime, D, D prime. Just because if you just consider this as a plane, since these are parallel, we have already proven that, we can draw the plane. So within this plane, it's very obvious that this is a parallelogram. So it's very easy to do the proof in all the details, which actually I don't want to spend right now the time because it's rather simple. And again, if you want to send me your very detailed, correct proof that this is exactly the same kind of a uh, prism as the original, well, ob obviously it should be, because all the segments are uh, symmetrically reflected to similar segments with the same lengths, and angles are preserved, everything is preserved. So the volume should be doubled. So the volume of the A, B, D, C, A, B, A prime, B prime, D prime, C prime, which is a parallel pipette is supposed to be double of the uh, original triangular uh, prism. So, and that's what actually makes me to believe that the area of the parallelogram, which is um, uh, the volume, sorry, the volume of, the par uh, par uh, of this parallel pipette is the area of the parallelogram at the base times altitude. Now, altitude is the same for a triangular prism but the volume should be half but at the same time at the, at the same time the area of the uh, base for a triangular prism which is a triangle abc is half of the parallelogram abdc so the formula remains exactly the same for a triangular prism because uh, volume should be half and the um, area of the base should be uh, half but the uh, h altitude is exactly the same so that's the very, you know, kind of a schematic proof. It's not a real proof because I didn't go through all the details. Um, this is a very schematic proof that this is the formula for calculating uh, the volume of the triangular prism. Well, basically that's all I wanted to say today about triangular prisms. And um, Obviously, certain problems will be introduced a little bit later, but this is just a theoretical material. Um, we can always uh, call uh, the uh, triangular prism right, as I, as, as I said before, if 
the edges uh, on the side, side edges are perpendicular uh, to the base. Also, if the base is um, the regular uh, equilateral triangle, it might be actually the prism based on this. If triangle ABC is equilateral, then the prism can be called um, the, uh, how can it be called? I don't know, something like a regular or whatever, regular right prism. Um, now, it's interesting actually that prisms are really um, used in optics, um, just as a side issue, uh, because if the light goes through the prism in this direction, for instance, then it will be, um, uh, it will go through the prism and it will spread into uh, a rainbow colors, uh, uh, as you know, because the white color has all these components, and every component is um, changed, the d uh, changing direction differently. Let's say this is the glass, so the glass changes the direction differently based on the frequency of the light, and the frequency of the uh, blue side of the spectrum is uh, frequency is greater, the wave length is is, is smaller. So that's why we have this rainbow colors when it goes through the prism. Um, so anyway, there are some very important uh, usages uh, for triangular prisms in optics and well, probably some other cases as well. All right, so that's it for today. This is just an introduction into triangular prisms and the formula for the volume. Um, that's uh, it for today. Thank you very much.